This video is a brief overview of the Disparity toolset with an ION dimension. Dimension works within Fusion and requires version 6.31 or later. Dimension can be accessed by the bin system, by menu tools inside Fusion, and of course tool access scripts like Control Spacebar. Let's take a look at the Disparity set of tools. In all stereoscopic camera original shots, you will be working with two image streams, commonly known as left and right. To use any of Dimension's specific tools, the first tool you'll require is the Disparity tool to generate the disparity map of the differences between the two images. Once the disparity is calculated, it's embedded into the extra channels, as seen easily in Fusion's Extended Channel Viewer system. Here I'm viewing the Disparity X differences. The Disparity tool has two different methods of generating the disparity results. These are computationally expensive methods and are very accurate in working out the results of the differences between the images. There is an advanced set of controls that have been preset to give the best results in their default settings. The Disparity tool can be expensive in terms of computational time. We suggest you write the Disparity results out to an intermediate format like EXRs, which can store the images and the Disparity data. ION offers a group of render nodes for use on a render farm or other computers to expedite this process. Once you have an intermediate format, the other Disparity tools are very quick and interactive. In this example, I'm using the same images as before, but I stack them as a stereo pair before I pipe them into the disparity tool. I'll then save them out as a stacked image. The result is still disparity creation, but I'm simply showing two available methods depending on what you're most comfortable with. Now it's time to take stereoscopic control. I now have our left and right images with their embedded disparity. If you put on your anaglyph glasses, I'll begin with alignment, which can actually be completed using two different methods. The new eye tool takes the disparity and allows me to use a method of alignment and eye separation as if you were using real 3D space. First, you can see there's a difference in Y, the height. So, I'm going to align my right image in the Y axis only to be the equal height of my left image through an interactive Y slider adjustment. Now I'll control my left image alignment so that there's no stereo, as it completely matches the right image. I'll put it back to the left image. The same alignment control is possible with the right image adjustment. I could move that all the way to the left image and back again. You also have the ability to hyperextend the results by entering any value beyond the slider's controls. In this example, I have two images with an exposure difference between them. It's important to note that prior to creating the disparity map, you should always match camera exposures as closely as possible. Exposure differences are the inevitable reality of shooting, especially through a mirror rig. So in this case, I'll use the color corrector's histogram and its match option. This will use the left image as a reference and match its levels to the right image, so the results will have the same color range. Once matched, I'll generate the disparity map and you can see the disparity here. Again, I'll make an adjustment in the new eye tool, just to see how far the separation is between the eyes. Now I'll pipe in a disparity to Z tool combined with the camera input and create a Z buffer depth map. That means I can now take the stereo scene into full 3D space using a displacement tool and I have the ability to actually extrude that image into real 3D space. I'll view this in an anaglyph view once again and use my camera to create the eye separation and change the convergence distance. This can be done in toe in or parallel. Let's have a look at the next example. The Stereo Align tool, as its name depicts, has a number of on-screen interactive alignment options. In this default setup, take notice, the height on the head is different as seen easily in the anaglyph view. 
In this case, I'll use the Global Y Alignment option in the Stereo Align tool. I'll view the upstream disparity and manually pick the height in the Align tool using the top of the head as my alignment reference point. When I jump back to the Anaglyph view, I've matched the height. Of course, I can control and adjust the convergence point and the stereo separation of the image. Using the new eye tool on the same footage, I can do something similar. If I make the right eye the height of the left by unlocking the X and Y differences and mapping the right eye all the way to the left eye's height, I can also adjust the stereo eye separation of the right eye independently of the left eye. Take note. The adjustment does not stretch the image, but rather, it does occlusion filling from the other eye. If you look at the detail here, you'll see that as I move the eye separation from one eye to the next, it actually picks up details and fills in space behind the object. Dimension achieves this by mapping the difference from each eye into the opposite eye. In this example, we have the images shot with a wide-angle lens on each camera through a mirror rig. There's polarization differences from the reflections in the water, as well as barrel distortion from the lens. So as previously mentioned, I'll align the color first using the color corrector's histogram match feature. This stereo pair already has disparity embedded in the sources, so I'm immediately able to utilize the stereo align tool to achieve precise and exact warping. In this case, I need to solve the alignment on a per pixel basis. Let's view the warp in, and now we'll take the warp out. Now my left image and right image contain the equal amount of warp. Once the image has been manipulated to that point, I need to regenerate the disparity again, and using the new eye tool, I'll reconstruct the right image by creating it out of the left. The source frames and warp direction allows me to use the left image with its vector and turn it into the same warp as the right image. Let's view the original left image and now the right image based on the same color and warp parameters as the left. In this final example, I'll use the disparity map to fix problems with defocus between the cameras. Here we have a right image that had the lens slightly defocused during the shoot. Using the new eye tool, I can reconstruct a new eye by remapping the left eye. I'll load the original right eye, and now the reconstructed new right eye. The result, I now have the same sharp focus in the right eye as the left eye. This video covered a simplified explanation of Dimension's Disparity Toolset. For more in-depth coverage, please consult additional Masterclass videos and the Dimension Online Manual at manual.vfxpedia.com.